I'm an optimist. I'm very optimistic. Tag Enrad joins us from uh, London. We've heard all this before. What's different this time round? Uh, not a lot, uh, I would think. One, one thing he was optimistic or hopeful of, I think, at this European summit in Latvia was that he'd be able to knock some leaders' heads together and actually gain some kind of leniency from them. But the clear message, and it's been the same message from France and Germany, is don't think there's any other way out of this. Greece has been on a mission impossible since it was bailed out five years ago. Raising taxes, sacking civil servants and slashing the minimum wage while trying to get the economy growing again. Public anger is palpable. In January, Greeks elected a new government which has refused to implement any more pain. The deadlock has come down to this. Four red lines that the Greek government says it won't cross. Straight to the city, here's Tyke. Hello, Ty. Okay, thank you very much. There's a warning today from the payday lending industry that new restrictions on who it can loan to are fueling a rise in illegal money lending. The charities who've been working with your industry's previous customers for many years, customers who borrowed money that they couldn't afford to repay, none of them are warning about this. If this is a problem, surely we'd be hearing just as much from these people about these bad money lenders on the well, internet. They are aware of them because when they come to try to uh, track down those people to sort out problems that people have had. Oh, they're with aware lenders. of it, but they're not. They're not. They don't share in your concern, obviously. Well, they. I'm sure they do share our concern. This report. Not enough to talk about. Well, it in the way that they you haven't today. had the opportunity to put the level of data together. Good evening and welcome to this month's crime call. Once again, we're calling for your help with some Garda investigations. This, however, is the field, Kilinarzen Hill, where Alan's body was found. And chances are, while he might have walked up the field, he probably wouldn't have walked up this road, so there might be a, a car involved that people might have seen. It's been a year now. The family obviously really needs some closure. What kind of extra help are you hoping for from the public? It's only 12 miles from London, but couldn't feel more isolated. And in weather like this, island life on the River Thames is far from idyllic. That's built on stilts already, all yeah? Built on stilts. Rescue diver Richard Holm introduces us to Wheatley's Eyot, a community of around 30 homes surrounded by the river. See, my nan's house is under. Yesterday, he helped most residents to flee, including his own grandmother. She's 83 years old. Does she see much dredging happening? No, she, she hasn't seen any dredging since Thatcher left. In London's West End, there's a new flagship of an old name in bookselling. And the new boss of this book giant is a man who made his way running local community bookshops. So how are you able to open a store like this when other bookshops are closing? I think bookshops are incredibly attractive places for customers generally. Hi. Enright joins us now from London with more on all of this. Talks at a delicate stage, but there seems to be a whiff of optimism in the air. Yeah, and that optimism brought about by a change of heart by the Greek administration, submitting some proposals earlier today that crossed some of the red lines in the negotiations that they had previously said they wouldn't cross. <laughs> M. Ford is getting ready to speak to her audience. 600,000 people subscribe to her YouTube channel where she talks about her passion for makeup. The rationale for YouTube is simple. It doesn't create content itself. It relies on its creator community to do so. And it wants to help them make the best possible videos to really engage with viewers. Half the world is starving with too little to eat and the other half died from being a beast. Out of the kitchen and into the studio, Jamie Oliver's gone political, telling the G20 it should be a human right for children to learn about food in school. But does he rap as well as he cooks? Did Ed Sheeran and Alicia Dixon give you a bit of coaching on the rapping? No, no, Ed just said you've got to rap this and I went, uh, I don't think I can. When diet-related disease is the biggest killer in most countries in the, on the planet, um, this needs to be the kind of antidote, really. And for those people who say maybe the G20 has more weighty issues to get involved in rather than interfering in, you know in people's homes. Uh, we all know that national security, global security, terrorism will be at the top of the bar, right? Diet-related disease kills way more people than any of that globally.